Hi, I'm Trish. Um, thought I'd give everyone a quick update on uh, the, the checkup I had at the clinic today. Um, and I apologise if I'm a funny colour because I'm, this is my first video on my new phone. So I've just left it at auto settings and we'll see what happens. So I went to my clinic appointment today. I haven't been for six weeks. I had to take in um, a CT scan that I'd had done previously for something else so that they could have a look and see where my uh, tubing was laying. Um, the background, in case you haven't seen my other videos, I've had a lot of pain um, under my ribs down the left-hand side since I got lap banded. And I've had gastroscopies, colonoscopy, uh, barium swallow, um, that was all. I think that's all they can really um, look at, you know, and you know, ultrasound and X-rays and all that sort of thing. They can't find anything wrong with my lap band. It's in the perfect position. Everything looks really good. So um, they thought maybe my tubing is rubbing on my diaphragm. Um, so finally, after three years, I've been put on a waiting list to um, have my tubing shortened um, because you can see on the CT scan that the tubing is all up in the diaphragm's business. So that may or may not be causing the pain. Shortening the tubing may or may not fix the problem. Apparently my tubing is already quite short. I, I didn't think it looked short because it hangs down to my bloody hip bone just about, but you know, the surgeon said that and I'm pretty sure he knows what he's doing. So um, I imagine I'll have been put down as a category two patient because of the pain that I'm in. Um, that's normally supposed to be a three month wait, but it won't be, it'll be a minimum six, six month wait, I would say, but I can cope with that. If I know, you know, the end is in sight, um, with a solution, then I'm, I'm, I'm cool with that. Um, and then if this, um, shortening the tubing doesn't fix the problem, then, um, I'm going to have to start investigating other options like, um, uh, revising to a sleeve or bypass because, I need something, but um, I think it's unreasonable to expect that I would have this pain forever. Um, I have actually gained 600 grams in the last six weeks since I've been to the clinic. Spoke to the surgeon about that, and I said to him, "You know, I'm, I'm you know, I'm healthy. My cholesterol's good. My sugars are good. My, you know, everything's good. I'm happy with how I look, but I'm concerned because the last three times that I've been to the clinic, my weight's just been." slowly slowly creeping up and I don't want it to get to the stage you know like I'm, I'm 92 or 91.7 kilos this morning and then you know next time I go on it you know I'm you know like 92.5 and the next time I'm you know 95 and then before I know it I'm 110 150 you know 200 kilos so I've got to I'm gonna have to I'm just gonna have to really look at things make sure I am drinking enough yes I am make sure I'm not having too many special treats probably am at the moment. Um, as soon as I'm feeling better and over this fibro may able to flare up, I will, um, I'll throw myself back into my usual exercise routine rather than just riding the bike for, you know, 40, 45 minutes, two or three times a week, um, which, which seems quite adequate, um, for maintaining fitness and as a, you know, like a normal person, you know, getting out and exercising a bit, but it's not enough for me. I need more than that. Um, but at the moment, um, I did a lot of walking today, um, and with this fibromyalgia flare up, I'm, I am going to pay for it. it was, it's hard for me to move, like it's because I'm just so tired. Plus, I also I stopped taking my iron tablets about a month ago, which I shouldn't have done. But when I take iron, I get really, really constipated, and you know, like I was only pooping two or three times a week. Now, you know, without these the iron tablets, I'm I'm pooping like a normal girl every single day, but. I'm really tired, so that's probably not helping. I'll have to start taking those again. Um, and I think that's all we talked about. He, he had a good feel around in my tummy, I think, just checking for hernias and lumps and bumps and all those sort of, you know, really obvious things. Um, oh, now you're probably wondering how they shorten the tubing. Um, when I go in, it will be um, incision-wise, very similar to when I actually had my lap band put in. They'll have all the, you know, the little three or four little cuts for all their instruments and stuff, and they'll pump me full of gas. And um, my the main incision that they'll need to do, depending on um, the, I think he said that depending on the location of where my port is now and 
um, where they have to get to to get to the tubing and if I've got adhesions and he said something about maybe um, tweaking my actual lap band a little bit he said they might move it a little bit to see if that helps um, I'll probably end up with the same either the, using the same incision point as my the, the main one where, where my lap band is and it, that's about that long but he said because I've lost weight um, and my body's changed now it might be um, he showed me where it'll be maybe up higher um, like just under my ribs so I'm, I'm fine with that. I did check and make sure that whatever they do to me, it won't um, affect my um, ability to have a tummy tuck. And he said, no, that'll be fine. Um, and as always, with any sort of keyhole surgery, there is always the, um, the chance that they'll, you know, like nick your bowel or something, and then they need to, you know, cut you from breastbone to pubic bone and, and fix it all. Um, that, that doesn't bother me. I just said, if you do that, just, you know run it in a little bit before you cut me, before you stitch me back up, just cut a bit of that skin off, close me up. So um, I think that's it. I think that's it for my clinic appointment today. So now I've got to go back in three months and uh, just wait for my name to come up at the hospital for that, um, to have my tubing shortened. And, I, and I'm not too fussed about that. I knew when I got lap banded that there is a very high rate of complications and a very high uh, re-operating rate for, um, you know, things that go wrong. So this this doesn't surprise me. It doesn't concern me. Um, I'm not worried about it at all. So that's it for now. And I'll catch you. I was going to say next time, but next time's going to be later this afternoon because I'm just going to have something to eat and then I'm going to make another video for you. And um, But for right now, that's it.